Meanwhile, back here in the UK, pro-Palestinian demonstrators are set to take to the streets for the seventh week in a row, calling for a permanent ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas conflict. Over the course of these demonstrations, police are set to hand out leaflets to provide absolute clarity over what could be deemed as anti-Semitic. This comes as police ramp up security over fears of escalating violence. Meanwhile, of course, the uh, comic relief charity has been plunged apparently into crisis because their chairman has sensationally quit over the charity's stance on the conflict. He's Eric Salama and uh, he's deemed its approach to the issue profoundly wrong. Well, joining us now to get uh, the latest on all this, a lot to talk about, is GB News's political correspondent, Catherine Forster. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start with uh, the march today. These leaflets that are being handed out, police say they want to provide absolute clarity. Do they do that? I've been at several of these uh, protests now because this is the seventh week in a row they're happening every Saturday, aren't they? I've been to several. I've talked to a lot of the police. It hasn't been entirely clear to me what would constitute grounds for arrest. I mean, yes, in some ways, if you deviate from the route, they're very strict about that, you might be arrested. If you were to display a Hamas flag or Hezbollah flag prescribed terrorist organisations, you could be subject for arrest. Um, if you cover your face completely, they would ask you to take it down, potentially be arrested. But in terms of language, Let's see what they put on the leaflet, but that is not clear to me. The, the, the chant from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free, which a lot of people would take as anti-Semitic calling for the eradication of Israel. I have heard that chanted at the protests I've covered, not for very long, I have to say, just here and there for a few seconds, then it stopped. Um, certainly, I've not seen anybody arrested for, for it's chanting. It's to expect the police that. to arrest mm. people who are chanting. It, it is. It? I mean, I must say, I know the police have come in for a lot of criticism, and uh, I'm sure at times it's justified, but they are trying to tread a very fine line. There's 1,500 of them on duty in London this weekend. I mean, the resources, the expense the cost of, of these protests going on every week, as presumably they will do while this conflict continues, um, must be huge. And above all, the sense I get from them is they, they would like to give people the benefit of the doubt because ultimately they don't want to inflame tensions. We know feelings are running incredibly high they're very worried about making it worse. So they've got... There's also basically people watching the police and there to give advice if somebody's going to be arrested. So it's hard for the police. They don't want to make it worse. Usually what happens is it all starts off very peacefully. I've been struck by how many families tend to be there, people with dogs, with toddlers on their shoulders, with babies, etc. Mm -hmm. But what usually happens is as the day progresses, as nearly always with a big protest, you do get elements that are there for trouble and things tend to get nasty. It's as night falls. Now, the protests starting um, today, the pro-Palestine protest, which tends to be the big one, they've been told they must not gather before 12.30 this afternoon. That's just north of um, Hyde Park Corner. It's going to process along Piccadilly and down ultimately to Whitehall. And it's saying the post-march assembly must end by 5 p.m. Mm. So they want everybody... It's like a curfew on it. Yeah. I mean, it will be dark by 5, but they want everybody gone. There's also um, a second protest today by a group called Hitzab Ut Tahrir. Forgive my pronunciation if it's incorrect. Um, that's a, an Islamic group that will be much... Um, smaller, um, pro-Palestinian, that well? that's also in London, that's outside the Egyptian en uh, embassy, that's a static protest. Mm. Um, and then the pro-Palestinian protest, not to go near um, the Israeli embassy, that's a no-go area for them. And then, of course, tomorrow there will be the march against anti-Semitism. So a whole weekend, and of course not just in London, happening up and down the country and up and down the world while you know, these terrible events in the Middle East continue. OK, we've got a, a four-day pause. We've got hostages being released, also Palestinian prisoners. But, you know, we do expect that at the end of that, the fighting will continue because Israel are determined to eradicate 
Hamas, understandably. I think what might have enraged a lot of people the other week was when uh, there were protesters uh, climbing over War Memorial, Hyde Park Corner. You know, the concern is that that could happen again, and yet it's not illegal. Yes, yes. I think a lot of people feel that this is massively disrespectful and just fundamentally wrong. Um, well, so, hopefully yes. that's not such a focal point this weekend. I mean, Remembrance Weekend has been and mm. gone. Yes. Um, and is, is there another march in Glasgow, Edinburgh or Aberdeen? I think there's a day of action at least going on. There, there tends to be marches in many of the big cities oh. around the UK. I'll come back to you in the next hour, which, which one specifically. Okay. Yeah. But we tend to, you know, get fixated on what's happening in the capital. Yes. This is not something that's just happening in this no, city. it's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere and, and, and it's around the world yeah. too. Mm. And around the world too, because people feel incredibly strongly about what's happening on the Middle East on both sides yeah. and, um, yeah. OK. All right, well, we'll find out more a bit later then. Thanks very much indeed for that.